Okay, so let's now get down to uh, a more thorough and uh, detailed investigation of what our scope is, what assets are in there, and uh, what uh, services are run to uh, perform some business job, right? <clears throat> we will go through the overall uh, vision of uh, CEH uh, according to this phase of penetration testing. Then, uh, in the way, we will uh, review the tools that can be and should be used for that. I will give you some uh, valuable hints from uh, my experience of uh, what are the pitfalls of this process because there are a few uh, nuances, I guess, uh, that uh, you should be aware, aware of uh, in order to save uh, you a lot of time. And uh, then we will get down to the practice, yeah, because that's, uh, that's what it's all about, right? Uh, so Methodologically, uh, EC Council's vision uh, about how this uh, scanning and enumeration process should look like uh, encompasses these two things that we have already done, right? In the reconnaissance phase, we have gathered information from open sources and we have determined to some extent the network ranges that are within the scope. And uh, scanning and enumeration, of course, is all about the network type of penetration testing. It does not involve any uh, wireless activities or any social engineering tricks, right? Uh, so, what left from this uh, scope of activities that we have to uh, perform by scanning and enumerating the assets? So, first of all, we have to identify active machines within the scope. So, within these network ranges that we have already <coughs> figured out, we have to understand what runs there uh, and what can be actively interacted with, right? So uh, these will give us possible avenues for the attack because uh, it is not practical to hack into something that is not responding to you, right? Uh, just because you know that it was there some time ago and uh, is reflected in the DNS zone configuration, for example. So we have to validate that uh, things are there and they are responding to our exploit attempts, for example, right? Then we will have to go through what these assets uh, actually do. So we will have to find open ports uh, and other access points that can be interacted with in order to execute potential attacks. This uh, will not be always just uh, open ports. Even, even closed ports are valuable information because we will see not only that uh, something is there, but something is there for a known reason, right? So it's running, but still it's closed. Why is it so? It will raise a question. If it's filtered, it uh, can give us an idea about that service is yet there. Uh, we cannot fingerprint it actively, but uh, we can assume that someone, not us, is allowed to get in touch with it, okay? But if it's closed completely, mm, this uh, may shed some light into organizational culture, networking, uh, personnel behavior, and so on, you know? So all this is very valuable uh, when collected in large amounts. So the more information you could get, the more... Uh, far going conclusion you will make. After that, we'll have to figure out uh, the nature of the things running on the network, right? So, uh, just knowing that IP address is there and it's uh, responding to your ping echo requests, right, is not enough. You, have, you will have to know what it is, uh, what operating system it runs, um, and uh, yeah, services as well, but uh, I just I just want to emphasize here that this information will be available to you um, to some level of precision, right? So you will be sure that it's uh, Linux, for example, not Windows or, or, or some other type of uh, Unix operating system. But you will not 
uh, normally be 100% sure about uh, the distribution and uh, the distribution version number, right? So you will be able to identify the kernel version, but still the uh, a large amount of information will remain uh, invisible to you. Okay, so get get ready to uh, get ready to operate uh, incomplete information because this is this is what it's all about. In the end, uh, we will start to put all this collected information into some order. Right, so. This is where things become really uh, business oriented, right? So this is the point when we are starting to collect the data that will be uh, in some cases uh, without any changes transmitted into our reporting process. So we will have to put everything in order because otherwise everything will be messy and we will have to uh, spend a lot of time just figuring out uh, what we have collected and what are the relations between all these assets. So in order to avoid that we will have to use some tools of uh, structured information uh, storage and uh, uh, I will see you a few examples that uh, have recommended themselves well throughout my career. So uh, keep in mind these two objectives. All the time we discuss this topic, we will have to understand that in the end, we need to get just two things. The inventory of all assets within target scopes, okay? So we'll have to uh, be able to put it in some table or written form and just uh, leave it like that for the rest of our penetration testing activities. We will update it, definitely, but the structure has to be established in the beginning. If it's tables, okay, let it be tables. If it's some kind of uh, hyper, hyperlinked uh, notes, okay, that's, that's good too. But we will have to keep it in order throughout the rest of the penetration test. And the second, now, uh, this early in the pen testing, activities you have to already understand the priorities between different perspectives right so as long as you have the idea about uh, what is run within the scope you will already be able to guess what paths what avenues are more likely to be attacked by malicious hackers and this should be an indicator to you of what paths to take in order to demonstrate this business risk. So keep in mind that it will be structured, it should be structured and it should be prioritized in the, um, the context of possible uh, perspective of the attack okay, taking place. So yeah, let's go.